Welcome to A Scrap Life, a podcast solely focused on the hustlers, grinders, operators, and business owners who live and breathe the scrap metal industry every day. Here is your host, Brett Eckhart. The first official podcast of uh, Isri 2024 in Vegas. I get the pleasure of sitting down with uh, Seth Alter, Adam Rubin of 74 Alloys, which is a Tunco family company. Yes, it is. Um, I'm super curious because I come from a business where we do kind of offshoots of the ex- the main, the mothership, what we like to call it, right? Yep. That's kind of the yep. way we've always said it. We say like, you know, we started with United Metals and then we built the trucking side and then we built this and that. So tell me about kind of how 74 Alloys has kind of came through the system and then we'll kind of talk about the two of you guys. Yeah, sure. Uh, 74 Alloys actually came up uh, about 10 years ago. Actually 10 years ago because we're, uh, we're celebrating 10 years uh, this year. Okay. And uh, it w- really came about from being supplier obsessed at Tunko. We, uh, we just, you know, Tunko was getting a lot of offers of all kinds of different stuff and uh, at the time that no one really knew what to do with it. High speed steel, uh, nickel alloys, you name it, they just, they didn't know what to do with it. So they kind of branched out and, and made another company called 74 Alloys, 74, the atomic number of tungsten. Yeah. And uh, so everything within the tungsten family uh, and so on and so forth. So just kind of grew from there. So originally, just so I could understand it, and we'll kind of go through the history, but Tunko is like really focused on uh, just tungsten, right? I mean, that carbon, carbide. carbide. Yes. And so that was kind of the main gig and so then you guys just like it's kind of naturally evolves over the years where you're like well what do you can you do with this and what can you do with that and people just don't want to have to deal with one company for each alloy they're like Correct. can you just fucking take all of it uh we want to that- fucking take all yeah. of it uh <laughs> yeah right. definitely um look uh, it's uh it, it's you know i mean Everyone's always been calling us and saying, you know, I don't want to put a little bit of this stuff on the back of the truck. Uh, can we fill it out with something else? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's what we do. So, you know, fill that truck up with that, with everything. Just put nice. it all on there and, uh, and we can do it all. So, so was 74 Alloys an existing company that you guys bought or was it something you started just kind of uh, hatched out of Tunko? It, it, it was created in by, by Tunko in yeah. 2014. Nice. Um, nice. So I only I only came on in 2016, but uh, it was it was there. Yeah. It was kind of you know a little uh, a little fetus at the time. Uh, so you know we kind of you know we kind of you know. Did they bring you in and, to put uh, some gas on the fire? Yeah, a little bit of that. I like it. That. I yeah. like it. Yeah. So Seth, let's talk about it. I mean, you know, we I I just wanted to get everybody to kind of understand what 74 alloys was and how it was related to Tunko. But at the end of the day, like. None of those companies exist unless you got the right people, good people. So obviously we connected over LinkedIn and started shooting the shit. And I'm like, you guys seem like my kind of people, family business guys, right? That's right. It's kind of part of the part of the deal. So give me a little history on, on yourself. How'd, yeah. you, how'd you end up at, um, at Tunko? Hang on one second. <laughs> Feel good? Yeah. yeah. Look good, feel good. Yeah. You know, you no, no, you're good. I'm like one of those back massage gals. Like they come in, like, will you like yeah. a back right, massage? Right, right. You see it on the floor <laughs> yeah, here? Yeah. I was oh, in the, in the sports book yesterday. Sports book, yeah. Nick and I were in the sports book. Watching the Masters. There. And they're like, hey, you want a back massage? I'm like, no, I just want a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, so I'm a second gen. Uh, I come from a traditional non Ferris and Ferris background in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, scraps in my blood, it's all I've known. Uh, I used to wander around a scrapyard as a kid, yeah. getting into trouble, uh, climbing up the cranes and, and looking into the balers and getting too close to the alligator shears. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so this is all I know. I came on board to 74 Alloys and the Tunko team in 2022. Um, Adam brought me on. I was a supplier to 74 Alloys and Tunko. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's been a great transition and uh, he unleashed the beast, man. Uh, yeah, I like love, it. We love Seth. We love like Seth. It. So you recruited Seth? I did, I did. Okay. Well, even long before I was at, uh, I was at Tunko 74 Alloys, um, I was in another company up in Montreal. Okay. Uh, and I was there for about 16 years, and even during that time, I was doing a lot of business with Seth uh, as well. So we got to know each other a lot over those years, and uh, you know, we kind, of, we kind of have a very similar style in how we do things. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, we're both not from the corporate 
uh, you know, the monster, uh, yeah. you know, we're smaller companies and uh, doing, you know, trying to make every penny count. Man, uh, every, I mean, yeah. that's the beautiful thing about, like, I, I love small business, medium sized business, whatever, like the big guys, they are what they are. I mean, they have, you know, they have a certain advantages, but like, the, like the real hustlers, the real scratchers, like the real like grinders yeah. are found in your small, medium size. Cause we have like every penny matters, right? Everything yeah. you're, you're always trying to maximize value. You're trying to maximize everything you can. And so when you well, get you, someone US like pennies, yeah, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're <laughs> Canadian. Know, we don't want to talk about we're Canadian pennies, points. you know, yeah. So, so do you guys, so you, cause, cause Tunko and Sin 4 Hours is based out of Kentucky, right? Yes. So do you guys now live in Kentucky or do you guys get a, you guys still live up in uh, Canada? We're, we're satellite yeah. guys. Yeah, we work yeah. remote. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. we're so, complete uh, road warriors. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because, so, so I, and I know just looking through like your guys' YouTube stuff and kind of, and now having kind of made the connection, you guys are actually have facilities like in Europe. And yeah. so you guys do a lot of international travel as well? Uh, we do, uh, especially for 74 Alloys. Well, not especially for 74 Alloys, but like we, we do a lot because we recently acquired a company in Germany called HSS Recycling, okay. uh, HSS for high speed steel. Uh, and that's one of the main focuses of 74. So there's great synergy between what we're doing in North America and everything that we can do and provide uh, over there at, uh, in Germany. So did Cliff find you, or did you guys find Cliff, or how does that, how does Cliff it work? Cliff and I found each other, I would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I was, when I was working at the company up in Montreal, uh, I was, at the time, Cliff's, Tunko's number one supplier. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time together. He's always taking me out, entertaining me. Uh, and it just came to a point where, you know, I had to move on. Yeah. And uh, I think immediately we uh, we hooked up and uh, the rest is history. Well, so you guys already been done a lot of business at that point, so it made oh, yeah. it, the transition a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he, knew, he knows how I work. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, there was no surprises. Uh, and me. you were doing business with Seth, Seth so yeah. I like yeah. it. I like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not that intelligent of a guy. And I didn't, and I just didn't know that much about because we just don't see a lot of t like tungsten carbide alloys in our area. I mean, we're just we have a very small sect of machining right. in, in Idaho, right? We don't have the aerospace, we don't have the shipbuilding, we don't have the big you know machine, Midwest machine shops that you see, and even in the South now, I feel like there's a lot of machining going on down there. So I was kind of ignorant to like Tungco. I didn't like I didn't know that much about, and then. You and I connected. That's right. And I was like, hey, you guys buy? I'm like, hey, like, I might have something for you. <laughs> right? Like, that, that I've been sitting on for a while that I think I could buy a lot more of, right? Which at that, would, for us, that was uh, construction, like basically drill tip, like heads with the, the road tools, carbide. Yeah, yeah the road yeah. tools with the carbide tips on it, right? Mm -hmm. And that was kind of our first transaction. But I think where you guys are going, where you're headed, is to educate people like, even like myself or that don't really have a to understand how much actual tungsten carbides high speed alloys are out uh, there that could be yeah. basically upgraded nope no i don't to, think many people know exactly what they have at all these days um you know i i, I came in I, I mean i didn't know anything about scrap i, I just yeah. uh, someone said you want to be in the scrap business i'm like refrigerators <laughs> like stoves i'm like I, I didn't know anything about it uh and when i came on you know it's kind of like they gave me the tungsten kind of focus thing um uh, but i remember still to this day i got this alloy book from this company yeah. and it's basically chemistry is about everything you know from ink canals to whatnot and i took that home every single night i studied it studied it studied it so for me you know like i loved educating myself and and today i i just love trying to educate as many people as possible uh, about everything above and beyond you know just the tungsten carbide yeah that's right yeah. so i see you guys this booth over there you guys got a crazy good looking booth over here yeah yeah so i would assume you guys are anticipating vendors consumers from all over i mean because i don't know how many countries they said are represented at this show but it's like 70 or something something crazy yeah, different countries number, yeah. so you guys probably have customers that are coming from all over right um, to come visit yeah absolutely we have a global footprint right yeah. Yeah. south america europe asia i mean we uh we definitely 
you know, we're not the largest company in terms of size, but our reach is 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 huge. Yeah. 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 And I mean, so what is like when you guys think about you know the larger competitors that you? What's your competitive advantage? Like, what do you guys? What makes you different than your large competitors? Whatever it takes. It's a philosophy that uh, Cliff and his father, uh, you know, really ingrained in our in our philosophy with yeah. work. Right? It's do whatever it takes, and that's my mindset. Uh, you got. To, I'm going to show up. I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to email you. I'm going to be at your yard, and I'm going to yeah. show you the ad value I can bring to you and your organization. And I hope. Listen, relationships are everything in this business. Yeah. Right. Hundred um, percent. And uh, I feel that's where what that's what sets us apart. Look, we don't want to just be good at one thing. We yeah. want to be good at everything from A to Z. Right. I mean, that's that's our motto. I mean, that's yeah. why you started 74 yeah. Outlaws. It's like because yeah. you want to just you didn't want it to be just a a tungsten carbide specialist. Right. You wanted to kind of like diversify exactly. and take care of your customers. I assume. I mean, that's kind of yeah. No, yeah. oh, I mean that's that's the most important thing for us. Yeah. I mean, supplier obsession. Uh, that's that's one of the key. Uh, mo- mantras of uh, of Tunko. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's across the board. It's not just 74 alloys, it's not just Tunko, it's every single one of their companies. Uh, the philosophy is the same. So when you guys think about like the future of like when you think about the future of your business, where you guys are trying to get to, I mean, what do you guys see? I mean, what is You guys got an awesome I'll kind of take a step back because I talked to Jennifer and Rissa and they came out and went through your guys' annual um, what do you guys call it? Like a stakeholders meeting, yeah, right? That's essentially, right. and so I got it inside. So I, then I was like, okay, I gotta see. So I started watching the YouTube mm-hmm. videos, and you guys, first of all, bar none, have an awesome company culture, from near as I can tell. Which is that's what this game is about yep. to me. That's why I do this podcast, not because I need another fucking job. Yeah. Like I do it because I love like meeting people that have that are building something. Like. You guys are building something, oh, right? Man. Together, they're, they're awesome. Cliff, Cliff, I tell you, is is awesome. Like yeah. what he's done with the company culture. Um, like I came from another company that there was not really much company culture at all. Yeah, uh, and and I would say it's a, it's a lot like that at many companies. You know, you go in, you do your job, you go home, and uh, and that's it. But yeah. like here, you know, they're constantly keeping you engaged. Uh, they're bringing you different places. They're teaching you. They're cross-training people. I mean, it's just you know. I mean, he, he's not your typical CEO. You know, yeah. he'll, he'll have you over to his house, and and, and 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 we'll just be drinking tequila till one in the morning. Yeah. So uh, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's or, or, maybe, or maybe bourbon as well. Or maybe maybe yeah. our special edition 74 10th anniversary bourbon. There we Introduce go. yourself. Go ahead. Ah, go ahead. Yeah. Please, please. I'm Amy. Amy. Yes. What do you do, Amy? Talk to uh, us. I'm a supply chain officer for the company. I thought you keep these guys and uh, the bourbon pourer. And the bourbon pourer for today. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wouldn't be a good podcast unless we had something to drink, at least to sip on. Okay. That's yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Right. Thank you, Amy. You're Thanks, welcome. Amy. Cheers. Appreciate Great you. Great being here. Thank you guys for taking the time. I like it. Yeah. It's it's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. You can taste the 74 in there. That's that, yeah. that's Kentucky right there, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. that's bourbon country. That is, that is. I was listening to, uh, I was talking to Cliff, and he was kind of talking about the how Tunko, you know, when his, his role with Tunko and how it kind of got started and how he started to grow, grow the business. And I started thinking about kind of my journey. But I think that the biggest thing that's, been, that's allowed me to have any success, I've been able to recruit good-ass people. Like, mm-hmm. that's what... I think any business like is your ability to recruit people and recruit like-minded yeah. people, but people that are, they're like-minded, but they're willing to stand up for what they believe in yeah. and kind of th- their I, route. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, it's the same for him. I mean, I come from Montreal. It's French Canada. I yeah. mean, I never in a million years would have thought I'd be like working at a company in Kentucky, let alone even go to Kentucky. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think my, my, my view on everything has changed a lot over, over the last few years. Um, you know, uh, I think the people in Kentucky are fantastic people. I mean, everything they say about Southern uh, hospitality, it's, yeah. it, it's there. It it's is there, and, it they, is. Uh, and they treat us that way. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Tunko's, so before yeah. you guys, before you had went to uh, um, work with Tunko, had you already had you been down to the facility, spent time down there? I, I did actually, okay. by chance I did. Um, I went in about 2015 
I was I wanted to immerse myself in the tungsten reclamation industry, like uh, in the recycling business. I wanted to know more. Yeah. And I actually went down to Tunco and I met uh, the team. And uh, it's crazy how my story, my journey, I ended up back there now working for uh, for Cliff and the team. So yeah. your journey, your second generation. So your dad was in it, I assume. Yeah, my dad Did he have his own yard. Or yeah. Was, okay. Absolutely. He. Uh, this is his 53rd year in the business. Okay. Uh, he, he bought a business that was established in 1926. Oh, wow. Great history. Yeah. It's a seriously contaminated land. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, um, I mean, 1920 is a different time, man. Lead I acid think batteries, crack them open. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, it's a, I mean I, I, we'll get back to it, but my biggest thing with that is people expect, in, in 1920, the rules were different. And you want people to kind of go in and like fix something that in 1920 was okay to do, right? right. I'm not saying that today it's, you have to operate different, right? But it's not necessarily in 1920 that was okay, you know. We we know better now, right? right. But that's not. I mean, to go and pun, penalize today's today's operators for what was going on in 1920 seems counterproductive. And that's what but, happened. But that's what so happened. Go ahead. City uh, expropriated the land. Due okay. to that, the con due to the contamination, really. Um, so essentially, yeah, penalizing right. my old. Everything's man. even different from two thousand from yeah. today. Right. It's I mean, very it's, it, yeah. So they so they basically took the. They said, "This is what it's worth. Uh -huh. Take this, take care. We'll go. We'll place you up north in a in a suburb that's more industrial." Yeah. And uh, he had no choice. When the city comes in and says that, he's got to you know adhere to whatever it is. Yeah. So uh, that land today is probably worth. 60 70 million dollars uh. <laughs> so but it is what it is <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah it is what it is um but yeah so that's uh that's my come up my journey uh so is he still in operation he still North? is okay he, he, I, we always say my brother and i he'll die on the floor yeah that's who he is and okay. that's the way he's built and you know what I, I, so your brother still works with my, him my brother yeah okay yeah my brother still works for him so i i'm excited like I'm going to do a podcast in uh, on Wednesday with Jay Rabinovitz, right? Yeah. And my dad. Oh, great. Two guys that, like, did it very differently. And, you know, Jay had a family business on the on the East Coast, and his dad still runs it to this day with his with his brother. Right. And his dad's 90 or whatever. I, I mean, he's like, he still goes to work every day. Right. And, he's, and he always said, he's like, your dad's my hero because he just walked away. He just said, I'm out, you know? And he goes, and Jay left his family business to go to Alter right. and help the Goldsteins build Alter, right? So I I think about that story and I think about your story and I feel like there's got to be some similarities, right? Absolutely. Like you're, you know, there's a family business and they're operating and, sure. and his brother's up there, your brother's up there right. helping, right? I, but it doesn't mean like that's the path for you. It just means like um, you're going to, you have a path and you're going to attack that path and maybe it's to help Cliff and his family build Tunko and 74 alloys and, and build that out, right? Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better. I, um, I treat Tunko as my second family. They yeah. brought me in and uh, complacency kills. That's not who I am. I'm going to give, I'm going to give it my best every single day. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a scrapper at heart. Hey, it's the Canadian way. Eh? It, I, know, I, no, it, no, really, I, no. You, I, you, yeah. know, you, got, you got your stars and bars on your hat there. I yeah. mean, uh, we should have probably come and worn our, uh, our Canadian flags on our <laughs> on our heads. Uh, you should have. Right, Truthfully, yeah, I'm ready to should've. defect, man. Yeah. I'm ready to defect. Well, you know, that's another story. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, we probably all I'm are. Ready to, but, yeah. uh, well, it's all, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it, the reason that people want to defect is because of politics, right? Not because you don't love your country. It's just the way that it's being maybe. Yeah, the politics right. sucks, and but, but, 53% but, taxes do also. So. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I think the same thing, like the reason and you get like the you know pe even the United States people get upset it's, it's not that they don't love it it's just that the politics suck yeah. you know and you're like golly so we were, I'm not this isn't a show to get into that so yeah. we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll back that off but yeah. that's funny you say that about your your story and your dad because I just like that's something I plan to discuss is like when you look across the landscape and you say that there's just there, it's, it has to be you have to follow in your father's footsteps and you have to do this it's bullshit like if that's not the path for you, to me, I, I, that's just not the path. Like, I always knew what I was going to do, but I think there's plenty of people that add a tremendous amount of value that grew up in a small family business that bring a whole lot to, a, you know, another table and say, like, I can, I can 
I know this industry and I'm willing to like, put, put the time in. 100%. So My, my dad's my mentor and uh, he taught me well, but he said to me, he implored, he said, you take this job. I'm clipping your wings, you go fly. And that's what I've done. Nice. Yeah, yeah nice. I, I was shocked he took it. But I'm happy he did. Yeah. Well, telling you. To be honest, yeah. I bet on him, yeah. but I also okay. bet on that guy. Yeah. And I knew I haven't met such a sharp dude. And I went out for lunch about two years ago, this uh, convention, uh, when it was back in Vegas with Cliff, and I knew. I'm like, yeah. I'm betting on that guy. Super sharp. You're dude. betting on people, man. Like you're not betting on the markets. You're yeah. betting on people that are gonna that are gonna take care of you when times are tough, and then when times get good, that they're willing to do the same thing. And I hey, think, look, uh, COVID when they in Canada when they buried us, yeah. you know, for like two years. Uh, I was worried. You know, I was worried. I was like, I couldn't get out of the country. I couldn't get out of my house. Yeah. Uh, and Cliff stuck with us, and uh, you know, he he was behind me the whole time. So uh, you know. You know, family does that. You know, yeah. regular people just just don't do that for people. Well, I think you know, if people get family sometimes construed too, and mm -hmm. I mean, like family just means that's where you came from, but it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that that's the people that are willing to take the the most best care of you, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times, yeah. you know, you'd like to think that they they will, right. and but there's a lot, oftentimes I feel that it's you know, like there's people out there that maybe even have your best interest in mind because they're willing to tell you like you're fucking up, yeah. or you know, they want to be more upfront with you instead yeah. of just let you kind of get away with, away well, with I it. I hope but, everyone tells me if I'm fucking Yeah, <laughs> but also, they're also yeah. the ones that will pat you on the back and be like, you're, you're doing it right, like, you're, you're crushing yeah. it, you know? Yeah. So, what are you guys looking forward to at the show? Anything specific? I mean, anything that just kind of... I mean, uh, connecting as usual with, with all our suppliers and uh, hopefully some new suppliers. I mean, we're doing a cabana. Uh, uh, host, hosting a cabana on Wednesday from 11 to 3, so uh, everyone should pop by and have some drinks and have some smiles. And, yeah, uh, let's have some sun. It's going to be yeah. nice weather, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Vegas is... Yeah. That's one thing about this time of year in Vegas. It's hard to beat. I yeah. mean, I don't know what it's like, you know, in Canada this time of year. I can only imagine. It's got to be, you know... Early innings. Early innings spring. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it's yeah, getting It's still... Yeah. I mean, even yeah. Idaho, we're, right, we're still 50. around... Yes, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. like mid seventies this okay. week, but I think it's it's cooling down. Yeah. A little cold front coming through, but nice. the weather is pretty hard to beat, so the cabana will be nice. How about you, Seth? Anything you're looking forward to? Uh, listen, this is maintaining building relationships for me at this this conference. Um yeah. and uh, to all my uh, competitor competitors, excuse me, out there, I'm coming for you. I'm coming <laughs> for all of you. This is my show. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. How many competitors you got here? Who knows? Uh, not many. Handful. Not many. Yeah. But I'm I'm coming. Yeah. No, it doesn't coming. matter, right? Oh, no, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, let's end on that. Kissing Fuck babies yeah. and making friends. Yeah. That's it, right? Yeah. right. Let's end on that. Yeah. If you're not here to do business and you're not here to like to compete, yeah. Like you got kids that play sports. I'm sure you guys both played sports. I don't know. Yeah. Do you have kids that play sports? I, I, I dance. I've got two girls. Okay, yeah, yeah, girls. So, I mean, but they compete. It's still competitive, sure. right? Sure, 100%. Like, if, in the scrap business, competitive. And it's not going to get less competitive. There's fucking less scrap today yeah. than there was three years ago, right? And if you're going to get scrap, you're going to get it from somebody else. Yeah. Like, tungsten, Hey, we're not Gen carbide, Zers, you know? Yeah, like... Your high-speed yeah. alloys, scra yeah. ferrous scrap, yeah. non-ferrous scrap, you name yeah. it. Like, that shit ain't going to the landfill. It's going to another recycling facility. Sure. That's right. So if you're going to get more, you're going to get it from somebody else. 100%. So if you're not here to compete, what are you here for? That's right. Complacency kills, <laughs> right? All right. All right. Good. So, Shoot. A little dry, huh? Yeah. Can we order? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm <laughs> good. Can we order a little bit of food I'm as Gucci. well? Or, yeah. uh, no? <laughs> Just a little bit. She wants to cap us off. All yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy. Appreciate you. Cheers. 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 Thanks for everything. Here's yeah. to a good uh, 2024 show 100%. in Vegas. Health and success. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>